Well, 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 we now live in a post-Zlatan MLS era. Well, sort of, he hasn't played yet, but will he be successful in this league? I'll let you know later on in the video, but in the meantime, welcome to the MLS Review, where we go over all the weekend action and news from within the MLS, obviously. I'm Adrian, your guide on this journey, and welcome to Rabona TV. If you're new here, consider subscribing and make sure you introduce yourself with a nice hello in the comments section. Cool? Cool. New England, could they be the first team to take points off of New York City FC? Well, I'll be honest, they were looking a lot better than I had expected them to this season. And with their high press causing problems early on for New York, Diego Fagundes found the back of the net by way of the post. That was his second of the season, but I believe his first of the season with the new Guy Fieri hairstyle. Don't quote me on that though, not an official stat. New York's midfield looked pretty weak without ring. They were also missing David Villa, by the way, but their attack still looked great, and they were able to show it off just after the half when Medina played the ball off to Abdul Salam, whose inch-perfect pass to Tajuri found its way past Turner in the Revs' goal. Turner has been great this season, by the way. I gotta say it again. But just 10 minutes later, a Christian Pania cross, a beauty at that, found Juan Agudelo to put the Revs ahead once again. But man, were New York City ever tricky in this one, as Yangel Herrera found the hot hand, that is Ismael Tajuri, as he scored his second on the day and third of the season. What I can say about this is that New England fans have got to be happy with what they've seen so far from three matches. Three matches, a win, a loss, and a draw. And one of those draws against one of the best teams in the league. Speaking of which, New York's depth is looking incredible. And the likes of Abdul Salam and Tajuri add even more to an already strong squad. Tajuri, by the way, has scored three from just three shots. Very economical, my friend. It seems like not losing and a focus on defense was the most common policy practice this weekend, and perhaps rightfully so. You want to get your defense figured out early in the season, as FC Dallas welcomed Portland to Toyota Stadium. And Portland fans going into this one, well, going into the season in general, I think, seem to be a little hesitant, a little precautious. And perhaps those feelings were justified in the 35th minute when Roland Lama hit a relatively uncontested strike into the bottom corner. That's his third this season from just five shots, so again, an economical boy. Portland then started the second half much better, and they were rewarded for their efforts just a minute into the second half when Sebastian Blanco hit a ridiculous curling effort into the top corner from just outside the box. It kinda resembled Zussi's goal from last week, actually. From there, Dallas had quite a few opportunities, and even more after Lawrence Olum got his second yellow for a deliberate handball. He wasn't even saving a shot Luis Suarez style or anything. He was attacking, Maradona style handball. So that's how it ended. 1-1 with Portland getting their first point of the season with two losses and a draw, while Dallas are still undefeated, but will be a little bit worried about their finishing. Again, it's early in the season, so these things will always, or at least hopefully, improve. You know who needs very little improvement so far? The crew, as they welcome DC United to Mafre Stadium, and... Oh no. Major League Soccer. No, please. Ibrahim takes it all! Not him. It's in the net and goal. Like he said, it was in the net after just 19 minutes, as... Milton Valenzuela! Kept a cool head in the box to score his first of the season. The former Newell's Old Boys player has adapted quite nicely to Greg Verhalter's squad so far this season. However, Yamil Assad has been itching to score his second goal for DC United this season, and after 29 minutes, he got his wish, with a perfectly placed strike from the edge of the box finding its way. <laughs> but only 10 minutes later, Pipa Higuain placed a corner perfectly on Ricardo Clark's head to make it 2 one, and to ensure that Federico Higuain joined the MLS 50-50 club as he now has 50 assists and 50 goals in Major League Soccer. Impressive. And he would pick up yet another assist just a couple minutes later as Columbus's counterattack flexed on DC, with Higuain sending Martinez down the left and Martinez squaring the ball to Pedro Sanch to make it 3-1, which was in fact the final score. All I can say about DC United is that the hashtag Olsen out campaign is gaining in strength, and perhaps for good reason. The team is looking pretty lame, tactically. And I don't mean that in the sort of slang way, like, oh, that's lame, but in the actual meaning of the word lame, unconvincingly feeble. Columbus, well, with everything that is happening with the club, kudos to them for just putting their heads down and giving the fans something to look forward to, something to cheer about, even with the likely impending doom of the team being moved. They currently have a near-perfect record of three wins 
and one draw. They're the team to beat right now. Alongside NYCFC, of course. Speaking of which, ish, New York Red Bulls finally started their first team for the first time this MLS season as they look to end the visiting Minnesota United's two match winning streak. Well, after just 15 minutes, the Manhattan Messi, Alex Moyle, hit a low drive from the right that found the bottom corner. From there, in the 42nd minute, a long range Red Bulls free kick was flicked towards goal by Tim Parker before BWP. Bradley Wright Phillips, I mean, you gotta know his name by now, he scored his second of the season. But he wasn't done there. And neither were the Red Bulls, as just like their New York only in name counterparts, they have an extremely deep squad, and it was Alex Muell, again, who found BWP who finished easily with the outside of his foot to give the Red Bulls a 3-0 lead, and his 89th goal in the MLS. And it was a very impressive 89th goal, let me tell ya. One of the best 89th goals I've ever seen. That's not to say that Minnesota didn't have any chances as Robles was made to work for one save, and Minnesota banged it off the bar for another. However. Red Bulls definitely deserve to win this one as they were fairly dominant and BWP is looking as good as ever. He could have had a hat trick if his deft flick hadn't come off the post in the second half. For Minnesota fans, eh, don't worry about this one too much. The Red Bulls are looking good this season and two wins and two losses to start the season, it's not the worst start ever. Two is just the amount of matches that Colorado has played now after a month of MLS action. Come on guys, don't be lazy, play more matches. You're not the only ones though, I see you, LAFC, who just bought my Andre Horta from SL Benfica and will continue to dummy the West. I see you, and you too, San Jose. Get playing, Seattle. Don't think you can get away from this one. Oh no, step it up. And these are just the teams in the West that have played only twice. But anyway, remember how I said that a focus on defensive solidity and not losing were the name of the game this weekend? That continued with this match as it ended 2-2 between the Rapids and Sporting KC. So what happened? Well, five minutes into the match, Edgar Castillo found Baji, Onion Baji, with a perfect cross and they doubled their lead just three minutes later when Joe Mason, who's making his first appearance in the MLS, kind of made a mess of a breakaway, but managed to eventually dance around Tim Melia to make it 2-0. But then that whole defensive solidity thing fell apart for Colorado, despite Tim Howard making some decent saves. In the 56th minute, Gutierrez scored his fourth goal of the season after four appearances, and in second half stoppage time, Sporting KC just played with the Colorado defense in their own box with little dinked passes and back heels, leading to Diego Rubio getting an equalizer. Now, as good as Sporting KC looked in their attack, they also look pretty bad in defense, as they have allowed nine goals from four matches. Not great. Last season, they were the opposite, allowing only nine goals from their first 13 matches. But if they do figure out their defense, they are going to be one hell of a team and could contend for a top three finish in the West. Colorado, on the other hand, it's hard to draw any conclusions simply because, as I emphatically put it earlier, this was only their second match of the season. They scored early and had a few close calls in the second half as they were perhaps unlucky not to get the win. Plus, Tim Howard looked far better compared to his calamitous opening match against New England, so there's definite positives. Unlike this Portugal versus Netherlands match that I'm watching where Portugal's getting trashed 2-0. By, by the Netherlands, come on! No offense to the Netherlands, but they're not good. Oh boy, the fourth of matches that ended in a draw of the six that were played this weekend saw Vancouver welcome the LA Galaxy, who of course brought Zlatan to the league last week. I'll get to Zlatan after we talk about this match, which will be soon actually, because this one ended nil-nil. Defensive stability. To be honest with you, I would be pretty annoyed if I was a Vancouver fan, considering the Galaxy was without nine of their starters. No De Santos brothers, no Ola Kamara who was too busy banging in a hat trick for Norway, no Zlats, no Alessandrini, etc. And yet they were still able to grind out a result and in the second half looked a little bit better than the home team Vancouver. Vancouver should have put this game away though as it's not as if they didn't have enough chances to do so. So for Galaxy fans, you're happy that your team, even your B team, can go away and get results with Siggy Schmidt at the helm. And with a full strength squad, they're going to be pretty dangerous this season. I mean, just listen to the players that I named before. De Santos brothers, Alessandrini, no Ola Kamara, no Zlatan, all missing. Speaking of Zlatan, let's talk about Zlatan. And here's my opinion, just 
from the top. There's no doubt that Zlatan is, or at least was, an incredible talent, and even more so, an incredible winner. He's a guy that's won trophies in every single country he's played in, with England being the only country where he failed to win a league title. His numbers also speak for themselves as he has scored 421 career goals from 730 appearances across all club competitions, not to mention the 62 goals he has scored for Sweden across 116 appearances. From the age of 30 to 35, he only got better with age, scoring more and more goals. But now at 36, going on 37, and with a massive knee injury, I really don't know how things will go for him in this extremely fast and physical league. I mean, I can only look at Didier Drogba as a comparison, considering they came to the league around the same age. In his first half season with the impact, he looked incredible. He showed some signs of slowness now and then, but his mobility was great, and his footballing brain was enough for him to get tons of goals and a few assists. However, after some injuries in the 2016 season, he looked like a shadow of his former self. The physicality of the league was too much for him, and there was only so much that positioning could do for him. His touch got worse as he tired, and it was kind of sad seeing him putting around the field, no more close to the guy you remember him as. But hey, we always have memories, Didier. Anyways, <laughs> and I'm not shaming him or Zlatan because age catches up with everyone. That's a reality we all will have to face. And the reason why I bring this up is because Zlatan is coming into this league off of a big, big knee injury. And I just fear that this will be more of an Andrea Perlo DP signing, no offense to Perlo of course, than it will be a Beckham or Giovinco signing. He will offer a few great memories and his intelligence and finishing ability will get him some goals for sure. But I don't know how long he'll be able to keep it up. But he's a lion, so he doesn't age the same as humans. Right, Zlatan? All right. That's about it for this MLS Weekend Recap. Thanks as always for watching, and I can't wait for next weekend when we get to take in a whole bunch of matches. But until then, have a lovely week, and I will see you guys on Wednesday for some chat back, perhaps. Take part in it yourself. It's a fun time, guys. Okay? Bye.